Hey everybody, it's your girl Mimi of Mimi's Mocha Treats, and today I'm going to show you how I created this Wharton Blue Streak Dahlia from Gum Pace. So sit back, grab a cool drink, and let's get to work. To get us started, I am using a one and a half inch round styrofoam ball. I then used a 20 and 18 gauge wire to create the stem and support for the flower. Now to create the petals, I am using this amazing gum paste from Ma Baker and Chef. I won it as part of my prize package while competing at the Sweet Art Master Sugar and Cake Show in New York City earlier this year. And let me tell you this, this paste gave me life. I'm telling you, the elasticity is incredible, and when it dries, it doesn't dry rock hard, so you can still manipulate it as needed. I definitely need to make sure that I get more tubs of it for future use. And for the petals and leaves, I used cutters and veiners from the Sugar Art Studio, and when you are really ready to step up your sugar flower game, you cannot go wrong with her products. They are definitely top notch. To create the center of the flower, I used the smallest cutter of the set and cut out 10 petals. I started with 5, and after veining them, I added them to the top section of the styro ball in a star pattern. I then took the next 5 and placed them in between each of those petals to fill the spaces. I added 3 rows of the petals to build it up, and as I added each row, I dropped the petals below the previous row. If you look at the center of any flower, you will see that the petals start to drop or pull away from the center as they develop. Now once I finish the fourth row of petals, I use the next size cutter and veiner to fill and complete the center. After looking at what I had done so far, I decided I wanted the center to have a little bit more depth. So I went back and added another row of the smaller cutter, and then after that, I set everything to the side to dry. Now after drying a few hours, I started working on the next row of petals. After thinning the edges and veining them, I then used my Dresden tool to shape the base of the petals into a cone shape before adding them to the styro ball. You will notice that I am actually pinching the base of each petal as I glue them to the ball. This allowed me to maintain that cone shape as I was applying it to the styrofoam ball. After adding two layers of larger petals, I found that it is much easier to add the petals upside down, flipping the flower periodically to make sure that I am adding them in a way that keeps all sides even. A trick 
that has always worked for me is to skip a space when adding a row, then going back to fill the empty space with petals. For whatever reason, it works in my head <laughs> and allows me to create full and balanced flowers. As the flower gets bigger, you want to start adding petals so they extend a bit past the previous row of petals. This will make the flower look like it is fully bloomed and also creates a larger flower for your cakes. As you will see here, I am actually flipping the flower upright so that I can see the spaces that I need to fill. I'm slowly going around the flower just to make sure that all the petals are placed in areas that will keep the flower looking well balanced. Okay, it's time to leave this flower alone and give it time to dry. So in the meantime, we are going to go ahead and create a bud. To make the bud, I used a center cutter from the Dahlia set and a gem modeling tool to create the veining on the petals. I used around three cutout centers to make sure I was able to give it some body and depth. Now, I'm sorry, <laughs> but I just wanted to show you the elasticity of this gum paste again. I am telling you, it is chef's kiss. Okay, so I've allowed the petals on this flower to dry overnight, and now I'm going back in with some floral tape to cover up the wire, because um, the next step is going to be in adding the calyx.
Okay, now that everything has dried, it's time to bring life to these florals. I also had some gum paste blackberries that I made earlier, so you will see me adding color to them as well. Here's a little secret. You want to make sure that you have aubergine in your color swatch, petal, dust, whatever you wanna call it, collection. By adding a small hint of aubergine or eggplant to the tips and corners of your flowers, it gives a look like it's been, I don't know, um, sun-kissed or a little burnt and it really adds a good amount of dimension to the overall look of your florals. Now, I hope you enjoyed watching me work, and if you are interested in classes to learn how to create realistic sugar flowers, make sure to leave a comment below or follow me on Instagram 
where I will be listing updates and class listings. And as always, I thank you for watching and I hope you have an amazingly sweet day.